Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb of Lazarus. It was a cave and the stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I, not, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him, and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what he had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the council and said, What are we to do? This man is performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and destroy both our holy place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all. You do not understand. It is better for you to have one man die for the people than to have the whole nation destroyed. He did not say this on his own, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus was about to die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but to gather into one the dispersed children of God. So from that day on, they planned to put him to death. All Jesus' miracles are amazing. But perhaps the most startling is the summoning back to life of Lazarus after he's been four days dead and his body has been decomposing. And this miracle was the last straw for the priests and Pharisees who for three years had been shocked at the behaviour of Jesus and alarmed by his popularity. And they could now see that he might attract such a following that they would lose their tight control over the religious life of the Jewish nation. So their wish to get rid of Jesus can be seen as a desire to hold on to their status and authority. But to be fair, they could also see that the Roman occupiers would worry if the existing Jewish leadership structures were replaced by something new and unpredictable. Occupying powers like the status quo to stay quo and can overreact if it doesn't. So we can accept that the priests and Pharisees wanted to avoid a political upheaval that might lead to Roman reprisals on their people. It's in this situation that Caiaphas stands up and says the unsayable. We need to kill him. Just one death will make the problem go away. We'll still be in charge and the Romans won't need a military crackdown. It's the kind of argument that we've all heard and maybe used ourselves. The idea that doing just one slightly questionable thing, a small lie for instance, will prevent something bigger and worse from happening. And that sort of reasoning is quite persuasive in the middle of a tricky situation, even if it looks less convincing when examined from the outside. But with hindsight, we know that Caiaphas was actually saying much more than he could have understood. John tells us that Caiaphas was speaking as a prophet who wasn't even aware that he was prophesying. John 11:51 to 52 spells it out. Caiaphas's words predict that the death of the one man Jesus wouldn't just be about Jewish politics, but it would be for the benefit of the whole world, what it calls the dispersed children of God. Well, we know how the story unfolds from here. The Jewish leaders plan to put Jesus, Jesus to death and they succeed in their plan within just a few days. It might be interesting to speculate just for a moment what might have happened if the priests and Pharisees had listened to Jesus and been willing to allow changes to their views of religious life and religious practice. But it's probably more useful actually to consider what it was that stopped the leaders 
from accepting that Jesus was even a prophet, let alone Messiah? The answer could be that they paid too much attention to his unorthodox and what they would have seen as disruptive activities, and they paid too little attention to the real meaning of his words. Their attitude was perhaps a bit like Martha's besides La beside Lazarus' tomb, when Jesus told the disciples to roll away the stone. Martha's reaction was to worry about the practical unpleasantness of the smell. But Jesus wanted her, and he wanted the Pharisees, and he wants us to look beyond short-term difficulties and unpleasantness and grasp the far-reaching power of his words. Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Heavenly Father, when our existing worldview is challenged, please give us the grace not to hide from the difficulties or attack their causes. Help us instead to look for what you are saying in and through the situation, particularly now the challenge of the present coronavirus crisis. And we ask this in the name of Jesus, who did not shrink from the danger of being the single voice speaking your truth to the powerful men who didn't want to listen. Amen.